what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a ride on the one wheel we have not done an intro on the one wheel in what seems like forever but today was the perfect day to do it because sarah and i got back from our texas trip downloaded all the footage and realized the intro i shot for our day out on the boat with Corey and brad was corrupted and guys that just happens sometimes sometimes you go out you film something on your gopro you get back and for whatever reason the files corrupted it's there you can see it you just can't watch it and that's what happened in today's video but that's okay because i don't mind coming out and doing a little bit of work on the one wheel the weather's really starting to get nice here in pensacola it's about 57 58 degrees here today throw a sweatshirt on take a ride around downtown pensacola it's nice. I like taking a one wheel to the office with me because sometimes I'll just step away from the computer desk and come out and just ride. But today I had a reason to ride because today we needed to shoot an intro. But for right now, we're going to hop in and let's go fishing. We got our first bite up under these docks. No fish on there yet. Oh, we got bit in half. But we definitely got it bit in half. We're gonna put him back in there and see what, what was happening. So yesterday was a bit of a struggle waiting, but today we're doing something I know how to do. I can throw some live shrimp up under a dock and see what happens, that's for sure. Y'all know that. Keep getting little bumps. They're just finicky bites today. Corey just got one put in the boat. I'm getting pecked here. Sarah's stuck. So it's pretty much just typical day on the water for us. Captain Corey putting Sarah on a fish. Oh what you got? Oh, Ooh, what that's your first flounder. Oh my gosh, boat flipping. Oh. Boat flipping. Oh. There you go. Good job. There you go, Sarah. I don't know what legal size is in Texas. Big, it's, it's 15. I doubt he's legal. No, he's definitely not a legal fish. He's gonna make it. You think? Yeah. You can eat him, baby. That's good eating right there. They're so good. Let's measure real quick and then we'll get a Have I eaten one? 15 inches in the state of Texas. Alright, Captain Brad's gonna measure up Sarah's fish here. Look at that. Oh, that's close, man. That's, uh, he's. Is it like a hair? I'm gonna say that that fish is. Oh, uh, he's legal. Ooh. Stretch fishy. <laughs> Which line is it? This one or yeah, that one? Yeah, it's that one. He's this little... one? Yeah, if it's that one, he's not. Yeah, if he shrinks up any, we could be in a pool. Yeah. We'll let him go. Okay, that, was a... that was close that was to a super keeper close, fish. But that was cool. So now everybody's caught a fish on the boat deck except for me. So yep. uh, that's pretty much it. status quo. It, so, storm's coming in. Everybody's caught a fish but me. Sarah's, they're going to release Sarah's flounder back there because he is not. Uh... Oh, yeah for sure all right guys so that's gonna wrap up the fishing portion we had a blast today did not catch a lot of fish i didn't catch a lot of fish Corey, like caught everything under the sun she like 14 did. like 12 pound redfish and like 22 flounder <laughs> so make sure y'all go check their video out from the trip because that's quite amazing to see but in all seriousness we had a good time out on the boat sarah caught that flounder we're gonna head back to the beach house we're gonna show you guys around a little bit and we're gonna like i call this the walk of shame you guys leave a comment down below and let me know what you call it yeah, everybody knows what I'm talking about. You got that day where you are you got this big cookout plan and you're going to go out and you're going to catch fish and you're going to bring them back and then, you know, you don't catch any fish. So you got to go to Walmart and either buy not fresh fish or hamburgers or hot dogs or something like that. I call it the walk of shame. Y'all leave a comment down below and let me know what you call it because that's what we're about to do. We're about to go to Walmart in Galveston and take the walk of shame and buy some food to throw on the grill. But as I always tell y'all, I ain't going to go hungry. So let's head to the house. You know, it's cheating when you use those poles like that. Yeah, so we had this elaborate plan. Sorry, I'm eating Cracker Jacks. We had this big elaborate plan to go down and make coffee for you guys on the beach. Because you can drive on the beach here in Galveston, which is common down here, but like in Florida. It was super fun and awkward at the same time. Yeah, so over, over like in Cocoa Beach, 
Daytona, there's places over there you can drive on the beach. In our area of Florida, to my knowledge, there's not any. So, but we're gonna make coffee out on the beach. But if you guys look out the window right now, I don't know how well it'll show up, but like, it's literally blowing like 35. It's crazy right now here there. in Galveston. So we are gonna go ahead and just make coffee in the beach house. So I do want to show you guys around. Not a whole tour, but just a quick tour. So this is actually. Brad and Corey's beach house that they were kind enough to let us stay in. But this place is awesome. It's like three bedrooms, two bath, all the comfort you want. We're literally like a block and a half from the beach or something like that. It's insane. So again, huge shout out to Brad and Corey for allowing us to stay here. We're going to make a pot of coffee real quick. And then several people are coming over and we're going to have a cookout here tonight at the beach house. Brad and Corey's going to be here. Mark from MDLR Fishing is going to come over. Sarah and I will be here. And we're just going to hang out and just have a good time tonight. So well, let's make some coffee. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to have for dinner. Because I didn't catch any fish. Sarah's trying to take over my job. I am. But look, I got this really cool I can't believe you actually spoon. bought that from home. Or did I you did. steal that from here? No, it's mine. I actually got it at an estate sale. And I thought it was really cool. So I was like, that's the perfect coffee spoon. Y'all, Sarah's like the queen of estate sales and yard sales. Like, it's literally her favorite thing to do ever. You can find really neat things. Um, if, if you ever want to know where she's at when I'm out fishing... If it's on the weekend, I can almost guarantee you she's at a state yeah. store or a yard sale. And it's so much fun. You can just find the coolest things. And, I mean, it's like snooping through people's houses with permission. <laughs> yeah, because that's something we need to be doing. <laughs> what a weirdo. Do y'all hear her right now? I mean, you know. Another thing. I, got, I was thinking about this last night. Y'all remember. Now, some of you may be too young to understand this. But some of you aren't. I don't even know where it's at. Sarah might have thrown it away. I did. Y'all remember when we were kids and you got Cracker Jacks and the prizes that came in them? Y'all, one time I got a box of Cracker Jacks and I got a live Shetland pony, like a real horse. It wasn't that extreme, but you get what I'm saying. There used to be good stuff in Cracker Jack boxes. And now it's like, it's just stupid. Like, I don't even know why. They should have just stopped putting the prizes in there. They're terrible. I just, I don't, I don't understand. Like, leave a comment down below. If, you, if you're like somewhere in the range of like, in your 40s or your 50s and maybe even older what's the best thing you ever got out of a box of cracker jacks when you were a kid because man when, when i was a kid and i know when some y'all were kids the prizes in cracker jacks were legit like you got cool stuff in cracker jacks and now it's just like it's terrible like it really is it's just terrible all right y'all so the coffee water is ready and i've told you guys this before but if you're new to the channel Making pour over coffee is awesome and it's really good and it makes really smooth coffee. But what you want to do is you want to pour a little bit of water on there. Let your coffee bloom for about 35, 40 seconds. And then once it gets to that, you want to finish pouring your water in, making a nice circular motion, working from the outside in. And that is important. Like so many people didn't think it's important to do the circular motion. I've seen so many people <laughs> grab their pot and just like dump it in there. <laughs> That's not how you do it. You do have to start from the outside, make a nice circular motion over top of your coffee grounds and then slowly work your way in. And what that does, it gets all your coffee nice and covered in water. Doesn't make anything stack up on you in there. It just makes a good cup of coffee. If you've never had pour over coffee, I highly recommend making some because honestly, it is like the smoothest coffee you'll ever have when you make pour over. It's, it's one of my absolute favorites. And yes, I'm passionate about coffee. If y'all think I'm passionate about cheese balls and fried chicken and biscuits and gravy, I am. But I'm really passionate about pour over coffee. My man. I've been trying to think about what to do for supper tonight because I'm pretty sure Mark's bringing over a red fish that he caught earlier today on his video. So make sure you check that out. I know for a fact that Brad and Corey are bringing a redfish over for them. Now, I do have the black drum from the other night. It's not my favorite fish to eat, but I'll definitely fillet him up. But I was just looking online, and I actually talked to Captain Steven about this a couple weeks ago when I was down in Tampa. I think I got an idea. I think for supper tonight, Sarah and I are going to have fish scraps. Scraps? Fish scraps. So we don't get all the other yummy fish, we get scraps? No, nope, we just have to have the scraps. But... I got a pretty cool way to cook them. Let's go check it out. Let me explain something to y'all. So Mark shows up. Mark from MDLR Fishing here. You guys know who he is. I'm gonna link his channel down in the description below. These guys are showing up with all kinds. Lone Star Beer, Texas Bourbon. I like, I don't know about this. Like, 
I don't know what all this Texas bourbon is and Lone Star <laughs> beer, but we're gonna try the Lone Star an beer. Icon. <laughs> an icon. Yeah, that's an icon. Texas icon right there. I mean, is it's it like bad? Burger. No, it's good. That? Y'all know I'm gonna What's, smell it first. You know the other one, right, Brad? I'm not, I'm not a native of Shiner. Shiner. Shiner I know I that. You'd be I, I should be very familiar with it. All right, I'm not mad about that. The Lone Star beer is all right. Okay. That's the heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like around here, let's get this guy a blade and shake it out. Cameraman Ron, yeah, right here. Mark? Mark? Guys, I found an MDLR. <laughs> I found what it is. I found it finally. An MDLR. That's right, Mark. So let's just get this guy a blade. Oh, that's what a sharp knife looks like. Are y'all seeing this? That's what a sharp knife will do for you guys. Like, I don't have a sharp knife, so. What, like, when you get your fillets off this, what are you gonna do with it? I usually bag it up or freeze it and then just toss it. Can, can, I, I, can I have it? For what, bro? Like, I didn't catch very many fish down here in Texas and I need something to eat. So can I, like, can I just, like, have what's left after you fillet it? Hey, you can have it. I mean, that's pretty gross but all right guys so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna let mark take his fillets off i'm gonna judge him while he's cleaning this fish on how well he does and then i'm gonna take the carcass and that's what i'm gonna make mine a sales meal out of y'all check it you out you gotta watch it all right guys i want to show y'all right now in all seriousness here's what we're gonna be doing sarah come down and show them so all this meat that's left on this rib cage that's what me and sarah are gonna be eating tonight all right so we're gonna show y'all how to cook it up right here. And just Mark thinks I'm crazy. Why, why, why are you showing That's out, all man? We're eating Trying to make me look bad. <laughs> why are you showing oh yeah. I mean, not that Mark did a bad fillet job. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I'm like he was doing that for me. Like he felt a little bad, and he left me a little extra meat on there. So we're gonna be exactly. barbecuing that up here in just a minute. That's exactly what I did, y'all. I, I still don't think you understand what's happening right now, Mark. gonna start, bro. So here's what's gonna happen, guys. The cool thing about this, and I do want to take just right. a moment and give a shout out to Walt's Knives out of Texas City, Texas. This one was actually made for Corey over on the CU Out There channel, but this dude makes some awesome handmade knives. I'll put a link to his stuff down in the description box below. Make sure you guys go check him out. But here's the best thing about eating scraps from other fishermen who fish better than you do, which Mark obviously did this weekend. So here's what I need to do to clean this fish. I'll check this out right here. So you're gonna go down through that backbone. All right, so yeah, you know, you, you can't always just use a knife. I mean, that's for, who does that anyway? So you just tear that tail off and then you're gonna come down through here like this right here. You're gonna cut, we're not even gonna worry about cutting the blood out. We're just gonna take this and that's what we're about to cook y'all. We're gonna take this, we're gonna throw it in the oven. We're gonna barbecue it and we're gonna have barbecue redfish ribs. Now you think I'm joking. Mark's already looking at me like I'm crazy, but I'm telling y'all right now, Mark's gonna be pleasantly surprised when we take this up there and cook it up and mine tastes better than his. All right, y'all, and Brad brought up an excellent point, so did Mark. You guys have been on us forever to try redfish throat. So Mark's actually gonna show me, I'm assuming we're talking about this yeah. meat right here. Yeah, this right here. So we're gonna cut that out of there, and tonight we're actually gonna eat the redfish throat, because y'all are on us all the time for that. So tonight, we're gonna give it a whirl, and we're gonna eat the redfish throat right there. I mean, we ain't got a lot, of, it's kind of slim pickings, and fat boys gotta eat. So we're gonna, we're gonna try the throat tonight. We are gonna take a shot of Brad's Texas bourbon here. Now this is Texas bourbon. So to clear up a very, very common misconception, a lot of the people think that you cannot have bourbon if it's not made in Kentucky. And that is not true. Bourbon is strictly how it comes off the still and what is used in it, not where it comes from. So many people out there think you can't have bourbon that comes from somewhere from Kentucky or it's just whiskey, and that's not true. You can have bourbon from other states. So this is a Texas bourbon. So we're gonna tie, we're gonna try just a little shot of it here. Pot steel, you hot, 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 hot steel, yeah, pot it's steel bourbon. Little. Well, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm already having trouble with my words today, guys, so. It's early yet. If you don't know, you should always smell your bourbon before you drink it. I don't know if you, you guys know that, but just so you know, I smell everything, <laughs> that's true, but you should always smell bourbon before you drink it because it, it gets your palate ready. Did y'all know that? Absolutely. I'm, I'm gonna throw down some Kentucky knowledge on you Texas guys down here, so. It smells good. What's your thoughts? Let it hit my, like. <laughs> yeah, let it hit the bottom. <laughs> Golly, it was still on the tip of my tongue and so I was like, what's your thoughts? It's not bad. It's fine, ain't it? It's pretty smooth. Yeah, it's Very not, smooth. it's not weller. And, and look, that's here. That's here. I do want to like shout out to Brad and Corey, man. It's like we show up, not only do they give me a bottle of Weller, which you all saw in the last video, 
But Brad's throwing down the Eagle Rare. Now y'all know me, y'all know. This is my favorite, favorite bourbon ever made. Comes out of Buffalo Trace in Frankfurt. And this stuff is just super, super good. But I'm gonna tell you that that Texas bourbon, it ain't bad, Brad. Like, Fine, it is. yeah, it, it, like I would, I would drink that. Like that, that's a pretty good bourbon. So, hey, I'm not saying it's any bigger, but it ain't bad down here in Texas. <laughs> Mark is over here like chopping fresh vegetables, and like he's got some cheese puffs over here. I think he's gonna Jeez. grind up. I don't know. I mean, this is the good thing about taking a leftover. So all I have to do is take my fish throats that you guys have been asking for lay them right there and lay that right there and we're ready to rock and roll we're done <laughs> look come on come on over here i got the oven preheat sorry Corey. i just smashed Corey in the closet <laughs> and i'm going to take it over here and we're going to put it in here and we're going to let it cook for a little bit and then we're going to put some barbecue sauce on it now i'm going to be serious for just a minute because i don't want to make like of this whole thing so Stephen Chapman actually told me about this. This is a real thing. So what we're doing is we're having barbecue redfish ribs. And there is a lot of meat left in between the ribs when you clean a redfish. So chop off the head, chop off the tail. We're gonna put it in here. I'm gonna let it just cook for about probably 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna take it out, put barbecue sauce on both sides, put it back in. And then you just take a fork and you eat the meat out from in between the ribs. I've never had it, but I actually did look it up online. And there are a lot of people that rave about redfish ribs. So I am actually pretty excited to try it. I know we've been kind of joking and making light of it, but I do want to take a minute and say, this is a real thing. A lot of people do this. Um, so if you've never tried it, give it a try. If you have tried it, leave a comment down below and tell me if you liked it or not. But we're gonna put it in here and give it a go. I'm trying this, I'm just saying right now. You cannot tell me that doesn't look good. It's fine. It is fine, Mark. Drop them comments below. Y'all, leave a comment on Mark's channel if you've ever had barbecue fish ribs. You're gonna be surprised at how much your audience is eating this. <laughs> All right, here's the flip. Here's the flip, y'all. Cheese puffs. Y'all are probably hungry. Hey, who's eating my cheesy poops? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Ron, I want you to walk me through what you made here, Bubba. All right, man, so we are making some redfish barbecue ribs. Mark's done lost his mind over there thinking that it ain't a real thing. I'm telling y'all, this is fun to be good. Yeah, I bet, do y'all use the word funna in Texas? Is that even a thing funna? down here? No. Funna. <coughs> like you're fixing to, you just say funna. I've never tried that. Mm -hmm. Not funnel cake, what? Barbecue ribs. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how this turned into a cook-off. Like, everybody's filming. It just became a cook-off. Like, everybody's filming. Y'all have to understand Look, what's happening right now. We got three Mark's different- got Pico. We got three different YouTube channels. Brad's got his camera going. Mark's got- This is gonna be one big mess if y'all try to watch this back-to-back. -back. Like, for real. Like, everybody needs to post on the same day at the same time. And everybody's just gonna be confused as all get up what's going on. Well, y'all know who's trying it first. So what you got to do is you got to dig the meat out from between the bones. So, okay, so these are the bones, right? Well, and then there's like little ribs running this way, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah, I feel it. Thank so you. just pull your little meat out of there and try it. I mean, it don't look bad. It's, it's going to be hot. That's going to be real hot. Don't like just stick that in your mouth. Blow on it. All right, y'all, moment of truth. <laughs> that wasn't a good reaction. I got bones majorly. <laughs> well, don't eat them. I mean, they are ribs, so I mean, it would make sense that you got some bones. Is it good? The meat's really good, but yes! I just taste barbecue. Tortillas. I want to try that throat. Can I try the throat wrong? Freaking nacho leaves. Right? Yep. I want to try your throat. Well, that's not sick. Mark, Sarah, you need to try the throat too, for real. I do want to try the throat. That smells so good. Do you want me to do this while you do the fish? Is it done? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah, that's good, Ron. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. the most hesitant. Bro, bro that's good. That's the it most was, hesitant. Like, I think the barbecue sauce was actually yeah. a little spicy. I'm from Alabama by way of Florida through Texas. Uh, that's, that's good. Well, I mean, you would eat anything. <laughs> yeah. You grew up eating possum. That is so good. It's not Possum's fine, so ain't nothing wrong with that. You can right, that. Sarah, you're up. Good. Eat the I like it. This little piece right here. And then we gotta let Mark try so some this ribs. Piece? Yeah. Okay, I'm that last time, didn't you? Yeah. He had scales. That's really good. Okay, well that's it's the throat of a fish. That's not bad. Here we the go. fork right there. 
Oh, right, y'all, Mark's gonna give it a try. Mark is over here like doing some Master Chef stuff. Dude. I'm just making sure I don't choke on one of these bones. I mean, bro. I don't want you to choke on a bone. I don't want to be responsible. Let's just do this right here. That, yeah, but that's the throat. Everybody knows the throat's okay, good. You okay. gotta, you gotta eat some rib meat. All right. You got this. Come on. It's like shredded. Bro, it's like pulled pork. There's nothing but <laughs> some pulled pork. It's like pulled pork. I mean, it's got the best barbecue sauce in Texas. It's gonna be just like. Have you ever had that Franklin's place? It's gonna be like that. Oh my gosh, bro. That's enough. You don't have to have a bunch. Just Dude. enough to taste it. He's not dead yet. That's a plus. Oh, he definitely got a bone. Yeah, that's a bone and a scale, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but the flavor, how's the flavor? Okay. Very barbecue-y. And yeah, there's fish in there. There's fish. <laughs> All right, try the throat. Yeah, Dude, like, I want to get some. Is that better? That's where it's at. Yeah, it's because that's that best barbecue sauce in Texas I put on it. <laughs> the best. Oh my god. Yeah, show them, Mark. You know, it's the best craft original. Y'all got something better right, than that? Drop, leave, leave them comments below, all you Texas viewers, if you know Sweet Baby Ray's. Do y'all have Sweet Baby Ray's? Oh, yeah. yeah but they don't hold a candle to craft original. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, I truly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a great big thumbs up. In all seriousness, we love hanging out with other content creators. We love collaborating with them. A huge shout out to Brad and Corey for being so hospitable the last three or four days. They put us up in their house, took us out on their boat. We just, we can't thank them enough for having us out. It really has been awesome. Make sure you guys jump down and subscribe to their channel if you have not already. Again, Mark from MDLR Fishing does a great job. A lot of kayak fishing here in the area. Excellent, excellent fishing. Not much for cooking as you guys can see, but uh, <laughs> he's a really, really excellent content creator. Make sure you guys check them both out. It means the world to us. If you guys support these guys that support us, we really, really appreciate it. If you guys are new here to the Cameraman Ron channel, I've told you guys before, this is the kind of stuff we do, man. We, we travel, we like to have fun with other creators, we fish, we do outdoor stuff. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, 20, 22 style. We can't wait to see y'all on the next one. Y'all take care, and we'll see you soon. We'll come back, let's keep working. Don't never grab the line, you grab the line. Uh, he'll break it off in a hurry. <laughs> 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 <laughs>